The Wild English Bible Narrated by Sam Cousy Book 3 Leviticus Yahweh called to Moses and spoke to him out of the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, When any one of you offers an offering to Yahweh, you shall offer your offering of the livestock, from the herd and from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it at the door of the tent of meeting, that he may be accepted before Yahweh. He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. He shall kill the bull before Yahweh. Aaron's sons, the priests, shall present the blood and sprinkle the blood around the altar that is at the door of the tent of meeting. He shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire on the altar and lay wood in order on the fire. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall lay the pieces, the head and the fat in order on the wood that is on the fire which is on the altar. But its innards and its legs he shall wash with water. The priest shall burn the whole on the altar. For a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, of a sweet savour to Yahweh. If his offering is from the flock, from the sheep, or from the goats, for a burnt offering, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall kill it on the north side of the altar before Yahweh. Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle its blood around on the altar. He shall cut it into its pieces with its head and its fat. The priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is on the altar, but the innards and the legs he shall wash with water. The priest shall offer the whole and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire of a sweet savour to Yahweh. If his offering to Yahweh is a burnt offering of birds, then he shall offer his offering of turtle doves, or of young pigeons. The priest shall bring it into the altar and wring off its head and burn it on the altar, and its blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. And he shall take away its crop with its filth and cast it beside the altar on the east part in the place of the ashes. He shall tear it by its wings, but shall not divide it apart. The priest shall burn it on the altar, on the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, of a sweet savour to Yahweh. When anyone offers an offering of a meal offering to Yahweh, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take his handful of its fine flour and of its oil, with all its frankincense, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it on the altar, an offering made by fire of a sweet savour to Yahweh. That which is left of the meal offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a most holy thing of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. When you offer an offering of a meal offering baked in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. If your offering is a meal offering of the baking pan, it shall be of unleavened fine flour mixed with oil. You shall cut it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a meal offering. If your offering is a meal offering of the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. You shall bring the meal offering that is made of these things to Yahweh, and it shall be presented to the priests, and he shall bring it to the altar. The priest shall take from the meal offering its memorial, and shall burn it on the altar, an offering made by fire of a sweet savour to Yahweh. That which is left of the meal offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. No meal offering which you shall offer to Yahweh shall be made with yeast, for you shall burn no yeast 
nor any honey, as an offering made by fire to Yahweh. As an offering of first fruits, you shall offer them to Yahweh, but they shall not come up for a sweet savour on the altar. Every offering of your meal offering you shall season with salt. Neither shall you allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your meal offering. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. If you offer a meal offering of first fruits to Yahweh, you shall offer for the meal offering of your first fruits grain in the ear parched with fire, bruised grain of the fresh ear. You shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it. It is a meal offering. The priest shall burn as its memorial part of its bruised grain and part of its oil, along with all its frankincense. It is an offering made by fire to Yahweh. If his offering is a sacrifice of peace offerings, if he offers it from the herd, whether male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before Yahweh. He shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle the blood on the altar round about. He shall offer of the sacrifice of peace offerings, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. The fat that covers the innards and all the fat that is on the innards and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins and the cover on the liver with the kidneys he shall take away. Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar on the burnt offering, which is on the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savour to Yahweh. If his offering for a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh is from the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offers a lamb for his offering, then he shall offer it before Yahweh, and he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering, and kill it before the tent of meeting, and Aaron's son shall sprinkle its blood on the altar round about. He shall offer from the sacrifice of peace offerings an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Its fat, the entire tail fat, he shall take away close to the backbone, and the fat that covers the inwards, and all the fat that is on the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the cover on the liver with the kidneys he shall take away. The priest shall burn it on the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire to Yahweh. If his offering is a goat, then he shall offer it before Yahweh, and he shall lay his hand on its head and kill it before the tent of meeting, and the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle its blood on the altar round about. He shall offer from it as his offering, an offering made by fire to Yahweh, the fat that covers the innards, and all the fat that is on the innards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the cover on the liver, with the kidneys he shall take away. The priests shall burn them on the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire, for a sweet savour, all the fat is Yahweh's. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your dwellings that you shall eat neither fat nor blood. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If anyone sins unintentionally in any of the things which Yahweh has commanded not to be done, and does any one of them, if the anointed priest sins so as to bring guilt on the people, then let him offer for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bull without blemish to Yahweh for a sin offering. He shall bring the bull to the door of the tent of meeting before Yahweh, and he shall lay his hand on the head of the bull and kill the bull before Yahweh. The anointed priest shall take some of the blood of the bull and bring it to the tent of meeting. The priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before Yahweh, before the veil of the sanctuary. The priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yahweh, which is in the tent of meeting, 
and he shall pour out all the rest of the blood of the bull at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the door of the tent of meeting. He shall take all the fat of the bull of the sin offering off of it, the fat that covers the innards, and all the fat that is on the innards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the cover on the liver, with the kidneys he shall take away, as it is taken off of the ox of the sacrifice of peace offerings. The priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering, the bull's skin, all its flesh with its head, and with its legs, its innards, and its dung, even the whole bull shall he carry forth outside the camp to a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn it on wood with fire. Where the ashes are poured out it shall be burned. If the whole congregation of Israel sins, and the thing is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done any of the things which Yahweh has commanded not to be done, and are guilty, when the sin in which they have sinned is known, then the assembly shall offer a young bull for a sin offering, and bring it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the congregation shall lay their hands on the head of the bull before Yahweh, and the bull shall be killed before Yahweh. The anointed priest shall bring of the blood of the bull to the tent of meeting, and the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before Yahweh, before the veil. He shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar which is before Yahweh, that is in the tent of meeting, and the rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the door of the tent of meeting. All its fat he shall take from it, and burn it on the altar. Thus shall he do with the bull, as he did with the bull of the sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make atonement for them, and they shall be forgiven. He shall carry forth the bull outside the camp, and burn it as he burned the first bull. It is the sin offering for the assembly. When a ruler sins and unwittingly does any of all the things which Yahweh his God has commanded not to be done, and is guilty, if his sin, in which he has sinned, is made known to him, he shall bring as his offering a goat, a male without blemish. He shall lay his hand on the head of the goat, and kill it in the place where they kill the burnt offering before Yahweh. It is a sin offering. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering. He shall pour out the rest of its blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering. All its fat he shall burn on the altar, like the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin, and he will be forgiven. If any of the common people sins unwittingly, in doing any of the things which Yahweh has commanded not to be done, and is guilty, if his sin which he has sinned is made known to him, then he shall bring for his offering a goat, a female without blemish, for his sin which he has sinned. He shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering, and kill the sin offering in the place of burnt offering. The priest shall take some of its blood with his finger, and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and the rest of its blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar. All its fat he shall take away, like the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn it on the altar for a sweet savour to Yahweh, and the priest shall make atonement for him, and he will be forgiven. If he brings a lamb as his offering for a sin offering, he shall bring a female without blemish. He shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and kill it for a sin offering in the place where they kill the burnt offering. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and all the rest of its blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar. All its fat he shall take away, like the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them on the altar, 
on the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, and the priests shall make atonement for him concerning his sin that he has sinned, and he will be forgiven. If anyone sins, in that he hears the voice of adjuration, he being a witness, whether he has seen or known, if he doesn't report it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or, if anyone touches any unclean thing, whether it is a carcass of an unclean animal, or the carcass of unclean livestock, or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and it is hidden from him, and he is unclean, then he shall be guilty. Or, if he touches the uncleanness of man, whatever his uncleanness is, with which he is unclean, and it is hidden from him, when he knows of it, then he shall be guilty. Or, if anyone swears rashly with his lips to do evil, or to do good, whatever it is that a man might utter rashly with an oath, and it is hidden from him, when he knows of it, then he shall be guilty of one of these. It shall be when he is guilty of one of these, he shall confess that in which he has sinned, and he shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh for his sin which he has sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat for a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. If he can't afford a lamb, then he shall bring his trespass offering for that in which he has sinned to Yahweh, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. He shall bring them to the priest who shall first offer the one which is for the sin offering and wring off its head from its neck, but shall not sever it completely. He shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. He shall offer the second for a burnt offering, according to the ordinance, and the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin which he has sinned, and he shall be forgiven. But if he can't afford two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he shall bring his offering for that in which he has sinned, the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil on it, neither shall he put any frankincense on it, for it is a sin offering. He shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it as the memorial portion, and burn it on the altar, on the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. It is a sin offering." The priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin that he has sinned in any of these things, and he will be forgiven, and the rest shall be the priests as the meal offering. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, If anyone commits a trespass and sins unwittingly in the holy things of Yahweh, then he shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh, a ram without blemish from the flock according to your estimation in silver by shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, for a trespass offering. He shall make restitution for that which he has done wrong in the holy thing, and shall add a fifth part to it, and give it to the priest, and the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and he will be forgiven." If anyone sins and does any of the things which Yahweh has commanded not to be done, though he didn't know it, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity, he shall bring a ram without blemish from the flock, according to your estimation, for a trespass offering to the priest, and the priest shall make atonement for him concerning the thing in which he sinned and didn't know it, and he will be forgiven." It is a trespass offering. He is certainly guilty before Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, If anyone sins and commits a trespass against Yahweh and deals falsely with his neighbor in the matter of deposit, or of bargain, or of robbery, or has oppressed his neighbor, or has found that which was lost and dealt falsely therein, then it shall be, if he has sinned and is guilty, he shall restore that which he took by robbery, 
or the thing which he has gotten by oppression, or the deposit which was committed to him, or the lost thing which he found, or any thing which he has sworn falsely, he shall restore it, even in full, and shall add a fifth part more to it. To him to whom it belongs, he shall give it, in the day of his being found guilty. He shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh, a ram without blemish from the flock, according to your estimation, for a trespass offering to the priest. The priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh, and he will be forgiven concerning whatever he does to become guilty. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the hearth on the altar all night until the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. The priest shall put on his linen garment, and he shall put on his linen breeches upon his body, and he shall remove the ashes from where the fire has consumed the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. He shall take off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it, it shall not go out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and he shall lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. Fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually, it shall not go out. This is the law of the meal offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before Yahweh, before the altar. He shall take from there his handful of the fine flour of the meal offering, and of its oil, and all the frankincense which is on the meal offering, and shall burn it on the altar for a sweet savour, as its memorial, to Yahweh. That which is left of it, Aaron and his son shall eat. It shall be eaten without yeast in a holy place. They shall eat it in the court of the tent of meeting. It shall not be baked with yeast. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, as the sin offering, and as the trespass offering. Every male among the children of Aaron shall eat of it, as their portion for ever throughout your generations, from the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. Whoever touches them shall be holy. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, which they shall offer to Yahweh in the day when he is anointed, the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering perpetually, half of it in the morning and half of it in the evening. It shall be made with oil in a baking pan. When it is soaked, you shall bring it in. You shall offer the meal offering in baked pieces for a sweet savour to Yahweh. The anointed priest that will be in his place from among his sons shall offer it. By a statute forever it shall be wholly burnt to Yahweh. Every meal offering of a priest shall be wholly burned. It shall not be eaten. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, the sin offering shall be killed before Yahweh. It is most holy. The priest who offers it for sin shall eat it. It shall be eaten in a holy place, in the court of the tent of meeting. Whatever shall touch its flesh shall be holy. When there is any of its blood sprinkled on a garment, you shall wash that on which it was sprinkled in a holy place. But the earthen vessel in which it is boiled shall be broken, and if it is boiled in a bronze vessel, it shall be scoured and rinsed in water. Every male among the priests shall eat of it. It is most holy. No sin offering on which any of the blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burned with fire. This is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, he shall kill the trespass offering, and his blood 
he shall sprinkle on the altar round about. He shall offer all of its fat, the fat tail, and the fat that covers the innards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the cover on the liver. With the kidneys shall he take away, and the priest shall burn them on the altar for an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests may eat of it. It shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. As is the sin offering, so is the trespass offering. There is one law for them. The priest who makes atonement with them shall have it. The priest who offers any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have for himself the skin of the burnt offering which he has offered. Every meal offering that is baked in the oven and all that is dressed in the frying pan and on the baking pan shall be the priest's who offers it. Every meal offering mixed with oil or dry belongs to all the sons of Aaron, one as well as another. This is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings which one shall offer to Yahweh. If he offers it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mixed with oil. With cakes of leavened bread he shall offer his offering with the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving. Of it he shall offer one out of each offering for a heave offering to Yahweh. It shall be the priests who sprinkles the blood of the peace offerings. The flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering is a vow or a free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offers his sacrifice. And on the next day, what remains of it shall be eaten. But what remains of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burned with fire. If any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings is eaten on the third day, it will not be accepted, neither shall it be imputed to him who offers it. It will be an abomination, and the soul who eats any of it will bear his iniquity. The flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten, it shall be burned with fire. As for the flesh, everyone who is clean may eat it, but the soul who eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, that belongs to Yahweh, having his uncleanness on him, that soul shall be cut off from his people. When anyone touches an unclean thing, the uncleanness of man, or an unclean animal, or any unclean abomination, and eat some of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which belong to Yahweh, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, You shall eat no fat of ox, or sheep, or goat. The fat of that which dies of itself, and the fat of that which is torn of animals, may be used for any other service, but you shall in no way eat of it. For whoever eats the fat of the animal, of which men offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, even the soul who eats of it shall be cut off from his people. You shall not eat any blood, whether it is of bird or of animal, in any of your dwellings. Whoever it is who eats any blood, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, He who offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings to Yahweh shall bring his offering to Yahweh out of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. With his own hands he shall bring the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. He shall bring the fat with the breast, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before Yahweh. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. The right thigh you shall give to the priest for a heave offering out of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron who offers the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right thigh for a portion. For the waved breast and the heaved thigh 
I have taken from the children of Israel out of the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and have given them to Aaron the priest, and to his sons as their portion forever from the children of Israel. This is the anointing portion of Aaron, and the anointing portion of his sons, out of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, in the day when he presented them to minister to Yahweh in the priest's office, which Yahweh commanded to be given them of the children of Israel, in the day that he anointed them. It is their portion forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meal offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the consecration, and of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which Yahweh commanded Moses in Mount Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their offerings to Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and the bull of the sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. Moses did as Yahweh commanded him, and the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent of meeting. Moses said to the congregation, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded to be done. Moses brought Aaron and his sons, and washed them with water. He put the coat on them, tied the sash on him, clothed him with the robe, put the ephod on him, and he tied the skillfully woven band of the ephod on him, and fastened it to him with it. He placed the breastplate on him, and in the breastplate he put the urim and the thummim. He set the turban on his head, and on the turban, in front, he set the golden plate, the holy crown, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses took the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it, and sanctified them. He sprinkled it on the altar seven times, and anointed the altar and all its vessels, and the basin and its base, to sanctify them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head, and anointed him, to sanctify him. Moses brought Aaron's sons, and clothed them with coats, and tied sashes on them, and put headbands on them, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He brought the bull of the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull of the sin offering. He killed it, and Moses took the blood and put it on the horns of the altar, round about with his finger, and purified the altar, and poured out the blood at the base of the altar, and sanctified it, to make atonement for it. He took all the fat that was on the innards, and the cover of the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat, and Moses burned it on the altar. But the bull, and its skin, and its flesh, and its dung, he burned with fire outside the camp, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He presented the ram of the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. He killed it, and Moses sprinkled the blood on the altar round about. He cut the ram into its pieces, and Moses burned the head, and the pieces, and the fat. He washed the innards and the legs with water, and Moses burned the whole ram on the altar. It was a burnt offering for a sweet savour. It was an offering made by fire to Yahweh, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He presented the other ram, the ram of consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. He killed it, and Moses took some of its blood, and put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the great toe of his right foot. He brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put some of the blood on the tip of their right ear, and on the thumb of their right hand, and on the great toe of their right foot and Moses sprinkled the blood on the altar round about. He took the fat, and the fat tail, and all the fat that was on the innards, and the cover of the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat, and the right thigh. And out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before Yahweh, he took one unleavened cake, and one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer, and placed them on the fat, and on the right thigh, 
and put all these in Aaron's hands and in his son's hands, and waved them for a wave offering before Yahweh. Moses took them from their hands and burned them on the altar on the burnt offering. They were a consecration for a sweet savour. It was an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Moses took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yahweh. It was Moses' portion of the ram of consecration as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar and sprinkled it on Aaron, on his garments, and on his sons, and on his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aaron, his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it, and the bread that is in the basket of consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. What remains of the flesh and of the bread you shall burn with fire. You shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting seven days until the days of your consecration are fulfilled, for he shall consecrate you seven days. What has been done this day, so Yahweh has commanded to do, to make atonement for you. At the door of the tent of meeting you shall stay day and night seven days and keep the charge of Yahweh that you don't die for so I am commanded. Aaron and his sons did all the things which Yahweh commanded Moses. It happened on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he said to Aaron, Take a calf from the herd of a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before Yahweh. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Take a male goat for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both a year old, without blemish, for a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for peace offerings, to sacrifice before Yahweh, and a meal offering mixed with oil, for today Yahweh appears to you. They brought what Moses commanded before the tent of meeting, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahweh. Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded that you should do, and the glory of Yahweh shall appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar, and offer your sin offering, and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself, and for the people, and offer the offering of the people, and make atonement for them, as Yahweh commanded. So Aaron drew near to the altar, and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. The sons of Aaron presented the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the cover from the liver of the sin offering he burned upon the altar as Yahweh commanded Moses. The flesh and the skin he burned with fire outside the camp. He killed the burnt offering and Aaron's sons delivered the blood to him, and he sprinkled it on the altar round about. They delivered the burnt offering to him, piece by piece, and the head, and he burned them upon the altar. He washed the innards and the legs, and burned them on the burnt offering on the altar. He presented the people's offering, and took the goat of the sin offering, which was for the people, and killed it, and offered it for sin, like the first. He presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the ordinance. He presented the meal offering and filled his hand from there and burned it upon the altar besides the burnt offering of the morning. He also killed the ox and the ram, the sacrifice of peace offerings which was for the people, and Aaron's sons delivered to him the blood which he sprinkled on the altar round about, and the fat of the ox and of the ram, the fat tail, and that which covers the innards, and the kidneys, and the cover of the liver. And they put the fat upon the breasts, and he burned the fat on the altar. And the breasts and the right thigh Aaron waved for a wave offering before Yahweh, as Moses commanded. Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people, and blessed them. 
and he came down from offering the sin offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings. Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting, and came out, and blessed the people, and the glory of Yahweh appeared to all the people. There came forth fire from before Yahweh, and consumed the burnt offering, and the fat upon the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted, and fell on their faces. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer, and put fire in it, and laid incense on it, and offered strange fire before Yahweh, which he had not commanded them. And fire came forth from before Yahweh, and devoured them, and they died before Yahweh. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what Yahweh spoke of, saying, I will show myself holy to those who come near me, and before all the people I will be glorified. Aaron held his peace. Moses called Mishael and Elsaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Draw near, carry your brothers from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they drew near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons, Don't let the hair of your heads go loose, neither tear your clothes that you don't die, and that he not be angry with all the congregation, but let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which Yahweh has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting, lest you die, for the anointing oil of Yahweh is on you. They did according to the word of Moses. Yahweh spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine, nor strong drink, you nor your sons with you. When you go into the tent of meeting, that you don't die, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, and that you are to make a distinction between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean, and that you are to teach the children of Israel all the statutes which Yahweh has spoken to them by Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons who were left. Take the meal offering that remains of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, and eat it without yeast beside the altar, for it is most holy. And you shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your portion, and your son's portion, of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, for so I am commanded. The waved breast and the heaved thigh you shall eat in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you, for they are given as your portion and your son's portion out of the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heaved thigh and the waved breast they shall bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat, to wave it for a wave offering before Yahweh, and it shall be yours and your sons with you, as a portion for ever, as Yahweh has commanded. Moses diligently inquired about the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burned, and he was angry with Eleazar and with Ithamar, the sons of Aaron who were left, saying, Why haven't you eaten the sin offering in the place of the sanctuary, seeing it is the most holy? And he has given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before Yahweh. Behold, its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You certainly should have eaten it in the sanctuary, as I commanded. Aaron spoke to Moses, Behold, this day they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh, and such things as these have happened to me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been pleasing in the sight of Yahweh? When Moses heard that, it was pleasing in his sight. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the living things which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth, whatever parts the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and choose the cud among the animals, that you may eat. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of those that chew the cud, or of those who part the hoof, the camel, 
because he chews the cud but doesn't have a parted hoof. He is unclean to you. The coney, because he chews the cud but doesn't have a parted hoof. He is unclean to you. The hare, because she chews the cud but doesn't part the hoof. She is unclean to you. The pig, because he has a split hoof and is cloven-footed but doesn't chew the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. These you may eat of all that are in the waters. Whatever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, that you may eat. All that don't have fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, all that move in the waters, and of all the living creatures that are in the waters, they are an abomination to you, and you detest them. You shall not eat of their flesh, and you shall detest their carcasses. Whatever has no fins nor scales in the waters, that is an abomination to you. These you shall detest among the birds. They shall not be eaten, they are an abomination. The eagle, and the vulture, and the black vulture, and the red kite, any kind of black kite, and any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, and the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat, all flying insects that walk on all fours are an abomination to you. Yet you may eat these. Of all winged creeping things that go on all fours, which have legs above their feet, with which to hop on the earth, even of these you may eat, any kind of locust, any kind of katydid, any kind of cricket, any kind of grasshopper, but all winged creeping things which have four feet are an abomination to you. By these you will become unclean, Whoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the evening. Whoever carries any part of their carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Every animal which parts the hoof and is not cloven-footed nor chews the cud is unclean to you. Everyone who touches them shall be unclean. Whatever goes on its paws among all animals that go on all fours, they are unclean to you. Whoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. He who carries their carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean to you. These are they which are unclean to you among the creeping things that creep on the earth, the weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko and the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. These are they which are unclean to you among all that creep. Whoever touches them, when they are dead, shall be unclean until the evening. On whatever any of them falls when they are dead, it shall be unclean. Whether it is any vessel of wood or clothing or skin or sack, whatever vessel it is, with whom any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evening, then it will be clean. Every earthen vessel into which any of them falls, all that is in it shall be unclean, and you shall break it, all food which may be eaten, that on which water comes, shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. Everything whereupon part of their carcass falls shall be unclean whether oven or range for pots, it shall be broken in pieces. They are unclean and shall be unclean to you. Nevertheless, a spring or a cistern in which water is gathered shall be clean, but that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. If part of their carcass falls on any sowing seed which is to be sown, it is clean. But if water is put on the seed and part of their carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. If any animal of which you may eat dies, he who touches its carcass 
shall be unclean until the evening. He who puts off its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. He also who carries its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Every creeping thing that creeps on the earth is an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatever goes on its belly, and whatever goes on all fours, or whatever has many feet, even all creeping things that creep on the earth, them you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. You shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creeps, neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them, that you should be defiled thereby. For I am Yahweh your God, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any kind of creeping thing that moves on the earth. For I am Yahweh, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the animal, and of the bird, and of every living creature that moves in the waters, and of every creature that creeps on the earth, to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean, and between the living thing that may be eaten and the living thing that may not be eaten. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman conceives and bears a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days. As in the days of her monthly period she shall be unclean, in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. She shall continue in the blood of purification thirty-three days. She shall not touch any holy thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying are completed. But if she bears a female child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her period, and she shall continue in the blood of purification sixty-six days. When the days of her purification are completed, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the door of the tent of meeting a year-old lamb for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon, or a turtle dove, for a sin offering. And he shall offer it before Yahweh, and make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the fountain of her blood. This is the law for her who bears, whether a male or a female, if she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, When a man shall have a rising in his body's skin, or a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes in the skin of his body the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons, the priests. And the priest shall examine the plague in the skin of the body. And if the hair in the plague has turned white, and the appearance of the plague is deeper than the body's skin, it is the plague of leprosy, and the priest shall examine him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot is white in the skin of his body and the appearance of it isn't deeper than the skin and the hair of it hasn't turned white, then the priest shall isolate the infected person for seven days. The priest shall examine him on the seventh day and behold, if in his eyes the plague is arrested and the plague hasn't spread in the skin, then the priest shall isolate him for seven more days. The priest shall examine him again on the seventh day and behold, if the plague has faded and the plague hasn't spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is a scab. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spreads on the skin, after he has shown himself to the priest for his cleansing, he shall show himself to the priest again. The priest shall examine him, and behold, if the scab has spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall examine him. Behold, if there is a white rising in the skin, and it has turned the hair white, and there is raw flesh in the rising, it is a chronic leprosy in the skin of his body, 
and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. He shall not isolate him, for he is unclean. If the leprosy breaks out all over the skin, and the leprosy covers all the skin of the infected person from his head even to his feet, as far as it appears to the priest, then the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the leprosy has covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean of the plague. It has all turned white. He is clean. But whenever raw flesh appears in him, he shall be unclean. The priest shall examine the raw flesh and pronounce him unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. It is leprosy. Or, if the raw flesh turns again, and is changed to white, then he shall come to the priest, and the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the plague has turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean of the plague. He is clean. When the body has a boil on its skin, and it has healed, and in the place of the boil there is a white rising, or a bright spot, reddish white, then it shall be shown to the priest, and the priest shall examine it, and behold, if the appearance of it is lower than the skin, and the hair of it has turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. It has broken out in the boil. But if the priest examines it, and behold, there are no white hairs in it, and it isn't deeper than the skin, but is dim, then the priest shall isolate him seven days. If it spreads in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the bright spot stays in its place, and hasn't spread, it is the scar from the boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or, when the body has a burn from fire on its skin, and the raw flesh of the burn becomes a bright spot, reddish-white or white, then the priest shall examine it, and behold, if the hair in the bright spot has turned white, and the appearance of it is deeper than the skin, it is leprosy. It has broken out in the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest examines it, and behold, there is no white hair in the bright spot, and it isn't lower than the skin, but is faded, then the priest shall isolate him seven days. The priest shall examine him on the seventh day. If it has spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. If the bright spot stays in its place, and hasn't spread in the skin, but is faded, it is the swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is the scar from the burn. When a man or a woman has a plague on the head or on the beard, then the priest shall examine the plague, and behold, if the appearance of it is deeper than the skin, and the hair in it is yellow and thin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an itch. It is leprosy of the head or of the beard. If the priest examines the plague of itching, and behold, its appearance isn't deeper than the skin, and there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall isolate the person infected with itching seven days. On the seventh day, the priest shall examine the plague, and behold, if the itch hasn't spread, and there is no yellow hair in it, and the appearance of the itch isn't deeper than the skin, then he shall be shaved, but he shall not shave the itch and the priest shall shut him up, who has the itch, seven more days. On the seventh day, the priest shall examine the itch, and behold, if the itch hasn't spread in the skin, and its appearance isn't deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the itch spreads in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the itch has spread in the skin, the priest shall not look for the yellow hair. He is unclean. But if in his eyes the itch is arrested, and black hair has grown in it, the itch is healed. He is clean. The priest shall pronounce him clean. When a man or a woman has bright spots in the skin of the body, even white bright spots, then the priest shall examine them, and behold, 
If the bright spots on the skin of their body are dull white, it is a harmless rash. It has broken out in the skin. He is clean. If a man's hair has fallen from his head, he is bald. He is clean. But if there is in the bald head or the bald forehead a reddish-white plague, it is leprosy breaking out in his bald head or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the rising of the plague is reddish-white in his bald head or of his bald forehead, like the appearance of leprosy in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall surely pronounce him unclean. His plague is on his head. The leper in whom the plague is shall wear torn clothes, and the hair of his head shall hang loose. He shall cover his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean! Unclean! All the days in which the plague is in him he shall be unclean. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Outside of the camp shall be his dwelling. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it is a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it is in warp or woof, of linen or of wool, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin, if the plague is greenish or reddish in the garment, or in the skin, or in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything made of skin, it is the plague of leprosy, and shall be shown to the priest. The priest shall examine the plague, and isolate the plague seven days. He shall examine the plague on the seventh day. If the plague has spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in the skin, whatever use the skin is used for, the plague is a destructive mildew. It is unclean. He shall burn the garment, whether the warp or the woof, in wool or in linen, or anything of skin in which the plague is, for it is a destructive mildew. It shall be burned in the fire. If the priest examines it, and behold, the plague hasn't spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing in which the plague is, and he shall isolate it seven more days. Then the priest shall examine it, after the plague is washed, and behold, if the plague hasn't changed its colour, and the plague hasn't spread, it is unclean. You shall burn it in the fire. It is a mildewed spot, whether the bareness is inside or outside. If the priest looks, and behold, the plague has faded after it is washed, then he shall tear it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the woof. And if it appears again in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is spreading. You shall burn with fire that in which the plague is. The garment, either the warp, or the woof, or whatever thing of skin it is, which you shall wash, if the plague has departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and it will be clean. This is the law of the plague of mildew in a garment of wool or linen, either in the warp or the woof, or in anything of skin, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest and the priest shall go forth out of the camp. The priest shall examine him, and behold, if the plague of leprosy is healed in the leper, then the priest shall command them to take for him who is to be cleansed two living clean birds, and cedar woods, and scarlet, and hyssop. The priest shall command them to kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. He shall sprinkle on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird go into the open field. He who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all his hair, and bathe himself in water, and he shall be clean. After that he shall come into the camp, but shall dwell outside his tent seven days. It shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows. 
even all his hair he shall shave off. He shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his body in water. Then he shall be clean. On the eighth day he shall take two male lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb, a year old, without blemish, and three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering, mingled with oil, and one log of oil. The priest who cleanses him shall set the man who is to be cleansed, and those things, before Yahweh, at the door of the tent of meeting. The priest shall take one of the male lambs and offer him for a trespass offering with the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before Yahweh. He shall kill the male lamb in the place where they kill the sin offering and the burnt offering, in the place of the sanctuary, for as the sin offering is the priest's, so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. The priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahweh. The priest shall put some of the rest of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot upon the blood of the trespass offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed and the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh. The priest shall offer the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed because of his uncleanness. And afterward he shall kill the burnt offering, and the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the meal offering on the altar. The priest shall make atonement for him, and he shall be clean. If he is poor and can't afford so much, then he shall take one male lamb for a trespass offering to be waived, to make atonement for him, and one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mingled with oil for a meal offering, and a log of oil, and two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, and the one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering. On the eighth day he shall bring them for his cleansing to the priest, to the door of the tent of meeting before Yahweh. The priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering, and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahweh. He shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before Yahweh. Then the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the trespass offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed, to make atonement for him before Yahweh. He shall offer one of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, even such as he is able to afford, the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering with the meal offering. The priest shall make atonement for him who is to be cleansed before Yahweh. This is the law for him in whom is the plague of leprosy, who is not able to afford the sacrifice for his cleansing. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, When you have come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put a spreading mildew in a house in the land of your possession, then he who owns the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, There seems to me to be some sort of plague in the house. The priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes in to examine the plague, that all that is in the house not be made unclean. 
and afterward the priest shall go in to inspect the house. He shall examine the plague, and behold, if the plague is in the walls of the house with hollow streaks, greenish or reddish, and it appears to be deeper than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. The priest shall come again on the seventh day and look. If the plague has spread in the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take out the stones in which is the plague and cast them into an unclean place outside of the city. And he shall cause the inside of the house to be scraped round about, and they shall pour out the mortar that they scraped off outside of the city into an unclean place. They shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. If the plague comes again and breaks out in the house, after he has taken out the stones and after he has scraped the house and after it was plastered, then the priest shall come in and look and behold, if the plague has spread in the house, it is a destructive mildew in the house. It is unclean. He shall break down the house its stones and its timber, and all the house is mortar. He shall carry them out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he who goes into the house while it is shut up shall be unclean until the evening. He who lies down in the house shall wash his clothes, and he who eats in the house shall wash his clothes. If the priest shall come in and examine it, and behold, the plague hasn't spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. To cleanse the house, he shall take two birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. He shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. He shall take the cedar wood, and the hyssop, and the scarlet, and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water, with the living bird, with the cedar wood, with hyssop, and with the scarlet. But he shall let the living birds go out of the city into the open field. So shall he make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law for any plague of leprosy, and for an itch, and for the destructive mildew of a garment, and for a house, and for a rising, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean, and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When any man has a discharge from his body, because of his discharge, he is unclean. This shall be his uncleanness in his discharge. Whether his body runs with his discharge or his body has stopped from his discharge, it is his uncleanness. Every bed whereon he who has the discharge lies shall be unclean, and everything he sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. He who sits on anything whereon the man who has the discharge sat shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. He who touches the body of him who has the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. If he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Whatever saddle he who has the discharge rides on shall be unclean. Whoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. He who carries those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Whoever he who has the discharge touches without having rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. The earthen vessel which he who has the discharge touches shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. When he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, 
then he shall count to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in running water, and shall be clean. On the eighth day he shall take two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and come before Yahweh, to the door of the tent of meeting, and give them to the priest, and the priest shall offer them, the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. The priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh for his discharge. If any man has an emission of semen, then he shall bathe all his flesh in water, and be unclean until the evening. If a woman has a discharge, and her discharge in her flesh is blood, she shall be in her impurity seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. Everything that she lies on in her impurity shall be unclean. Everything also that she sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. Whoever touches anything that she sits on shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. If it is on the bed, or anything whereon she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until the evening. If any man lies with her, and her monthly flow is on him, he shall be unclean seven days, and every bed whereon he lies shall be unclean. If a woman has a discharge of her blood many days not in the time of her period, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her period, all the days of the discharge of her uncleanness shall be as in the days of her period. She is unclean. Every bed whereon she lies all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her period, and everything whereon she sits shall be unclean, as the uncleanness of her period. Whoever touches these things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall count to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. On the eighth day she shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons, and bring them to the priest, to the door of the tent of meeting. The priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her before Yahweh for the uncleanness of her discharge. Thus you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, so they will not die in their uncleanness, when they defile my tabernacle that is in their midst. This is the law of him who has a discharge, and of him who has an emission of semen, so that he is unclean thereby, and of her who has a period, and of a man or woman who has a discharge, and of him who lies with her who is unclean. Yahweh spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they drew near before Yahweh and died. And Yahweh said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come at all times into the most holy place within the veil, before the mercy seat which is on the ark, lest he die for I will appear in the cloud on the mercy seat. Herewith shall Aaron come into the sanctuary with a young bull for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches on his body, and shall put on the linen sash, and he shall be dressed with the linen turban. They are the holy garments, he shall bathe his body in water and put them on. He shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two male goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and set them before Yahweh at the door of the tent of meeting. Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for Yahweh, and the other lot for the scapegoat. Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for Yahweh, and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for the scapegoat shall be presented alive before Yahweh, to make atonement for him, to send him away for the scapegoat into the wilderness. Aaron shall present the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, 
and shall make atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull of the sin offering which is for himself. He shall take a censer full of coals of fire from off the altar before Yahweh, and two handfuls of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil, and he shall put the incense on the fire before Yahweh, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony, so that he will not die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat on the east, and before the mercy seat he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, that is, for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with his blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat, and he shall make atonement for the holy place, because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, and because of their transgressions, even all their sins. And so he shall do for the tent of meeting that dwells with them in the midst of their uncleanness. There shall be no one in the tent of meeting when he enters to make atonement in the holy place, until he comes out, and has made atonement for himself and for his household, and for all the assembly of Israel. He shall go out to the altar that is before Yahweh, and make atonement for it, and shall take some of the bull's blood, and some of the goat's blood, and put it on the horns of the altar round about. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times, and cleanse it, and make it holy from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. When he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tent of meeting, and the altar, he shall present the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions, even all their sins, and he shall put them on the head of the goat, and shall send him away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in readiness. The goat shall carry all their iniquities on himself to a solitary land, and he shall let the goat go in the wilderness. Aaron shall come into the tent of meeting, and shall take off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. Then he shall bathe himself in water in a holy place, and put on his garments, and come out and offer his burnt offering, and the burnt offering of the people, and make atonement for himself and the people. The fat of the sin offering he shall burn on the altar. He who lets the goat go for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. The bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall be carried forth outside the camp, and they shall burn their skins, their flesh, and their dung with fire. He who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. It shall be a statute to you forever. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls, and shall do no manner of work, the native-born or the stranger who lives as a foreigner among you. For on this day shall atonement be made for you, to cleanse you from all your sins you shall be clean before Yahweh. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you, and you shall afflict your souls. It is a statute forever. The priest, who is anointed and who is consecrated to be priest in his father's place, shall make atonement and shall put on the linen garments, even the holy garments. Then he shall make atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make atonement for the tent of meeting and for the altar, and he shall make atonement for the priests of all the people of the assembly. This shall be an everlasting statute for you, to make atonement for the children of Israel once in the year because of all their sins. It was done as Yahweh commanded Moses. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel and say to them, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. 
Whatever man there is of the house of Israel who kills an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or who kills it outside the camp, and hasn't brought it to the door of the tent of meeting to offer it as an offering to Yahweh before the tabernacle of Yahweh, blood shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. This is to the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices, which they sacrifice in the open field, that they may bring them to Yahweh, to the door of the tent of meeting, to the priest, and sacrifice them for the sacrifices of peace offerings to Yahweh. The priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of Yahweh at the door of the tent of meeting, and burn the fat for a sweet savour to Yahweh. They shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to the goat idols, after which they play the prostitute. This shall be a statute forever to them throughout their generations. You shall say to them, Any man there is of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who live as foreigners among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, and doesn't bring it to the door of the tent of meeting, to sacrifice it to Yahweh, that man shall be cut off from his people. Any man of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who live as foreigners among them, who eats any kind of blood, I will set my face against that soul who eats blood, and will cut him off from his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life. Therefore, I have said to the children of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who lives as a foreigner among you eat blood. Whatever man there is of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who live as foreigners among them, who takes in hunting any animal or bird that may be eaten, he shall pour out his blood and cover it with dust. For as to the life of all flesh, its blood is with its life. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any kind of flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. Every person that eats what dies of itself, or that which is torn by animals, whether he is native-born or a foreigner, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he doesn't wash them or bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Yahweh your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt where you lived, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you, neither shall you walk in their statutes. You shall do my ordinances, and you shall keep my statutes, and walk in them. I am Yahweh your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my ordinances, which, if a man does, he shall live in them. I am Yahweh. None of you shall approach anyone who are his close relatives to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahweh. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father, nor the nakedness of your mother. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is your father's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or born abroad. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your son's daughter, or of your daughter's daughter, even their nakedness, for theirs is your own nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, conceived by your father, since she is your sister. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister, she is your father's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother, and you shall not approach his wife, she is your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. 
You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. You shall not take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are near kinswomen. It is wickedness. You shall not take a wife to her sister to be a rival, to uncover her nakedness, while her sister is yet alive. You shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness, as long as she is impure by her uncleanness. You shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. You shall not give any of your children to sacrifice to Molech, neither shall you profane the name of your God. I am Yahweh. You shall not lie with a man as with a woman, that is detestable. You shall not lie with any animal to defile yourself with it, neither shall any woman give herself to an animal to lie down with it, it is a perversion. Don't defile yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations which I am casting out before you were defiled. The land was defiled, therefore I punished its iniquity, and the land vomited out her inhabitants. You therefore shall keep my statutes and my ordinances, and shall not do any of these abominations, neither the native-born nor the stranger who lives as a foreigner among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done that were before you, and the land became defiled, that the land not vomit you out also when you defile it, as it vomited out the nation that was before you. For whoever shall do any of these abominations, even the souls that do them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore you shall keep my charge that you do not practice any of these abominable customs which were practiced before you, and that you do not defile yourselves with them. I am Yahweh your God. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and tell them, You shall be holy, for I, Yahweh your God, am holy. Each one of you shall respect his mother and his father. You shall keep my Sabbaths. I am Yahweh your God. Don't turn to idols, nor make molten gods for yourselves. I am Yahweh your God. When you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it, and on the next day, and if anything remains until the third day, it shall be burned with fire. If it is eaten at all on the third day, it is an abomination, it will not be accepted. But everyone who eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned the holy thing of Yahweh, and that soul shall be cut off from his people. When you reap the harvest of the land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not glean your vineyard, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the foreigner. I am Yahweh your God. You shall not steal, neither shall you deal falsely, nor lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and profane the name of your God. I am Yahweh. You shall not oppress your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am Yahweh. You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor show favoritism to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go up and down as a slanderer among your people, neither shall you stand against the life, literally blood, of your neighbor. I am Yahweh. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not crossbreed different kinds of animals. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seeds. Neither shall there come upon you a garment made of two kinds of material. If a man lies carnally with a woman who is a slave girl, pledged to be married to another, and not ransomed or given her freedom, 
they shall be punished. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. He shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh, to the door of the tent of meeting, even a ram for a trespass offering. The priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before Yahweh for his sin which he committed, and the sin which he has committed shall be forgiven him. When you come into the land and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as forbidden, literally uncircumcised. Three years shall they be forbidden to you, it shall not be eaten. But in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy, for giving praise to Yahweh. In the fifth year you shall eat its fruit, that it may yield its increase to you. I am Yahweh your God. You shall not eat any meat with the blood still in it, neither shall you use enchantments, nor practice sorcery. You shall not cut the hair on the sides of your heads, neither shall you clip off the edge of your beard. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am Yahweh. Don't profane your daughter to make her a prostitute, lest the land fall into prostitution, and the land become full of wickedness. You shall keep my Sabbaths, and reverence my sanctuary. I am Yahweh. Don't turn to those who are mediums, nor to the wizards. Don't seek them out, to be defiled by them. I am Yahweh your God. You shall rise up before the grey head, and honour the face of an old man, and you shall fear your God. I am Yahweh. If a stranger lives as a foreigner with you in the land, you shall not do him wrong. The stranger who lives as a foreigner with you shall be to you as the native born among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you lived as foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in measures of length, of weight, or of quantity. Just balances, just weights, a just ether, and a just hin shall you have. I am Yahweh your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall observe all my statutes and all my ordinances and do them. I am Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Moreover, you shall tell the children of Israel, any one of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who live as foreigners in Israel, who gives any of his seed to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people because he has given his seed to Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. If the people of the land all hide their eyes from that person when he gives off his seed to Molech and don't put him to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and I will cut him off, and all who play the prostitute after him, to play the prostitute with Molech from among their people. The person that turns to those who are mediums, and to the wizards, to play the prostitute after them, I will even set my face against that person, and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am Yahweh your God. You shall keep my statutes and do them. I am Yahweh who sanctifies you. For everyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. The man who commits adultery with another man's wife even he who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. The man who lies with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed a perversion. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. If a man takes a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burned with fire. 
both he and they, that there may be no wickedness among you. If a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and lies down with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. If a man takes his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and sees her nakedness, and she sees his nakedness, it is a shameful thing. And they shall be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. If a man lies with a woman having her monthly period and uncovers her nakedness, he has made naked her fountain, and she has uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, nor of your father's sister, for he has made naked his close relative. They shall bear their iniquity. If a man lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is an impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and do them, that the land where I am bringing you to dwell may not vomit you out. You shall not walk in the customs of the nation which I am casting out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I abhor them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am Yahweh your God, who has separated you from the peoples. You shall therefore make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean fowl and the clean, and you shall not make yourselves abominable by animal, or by bird, or by anything with which the ground teems, which I have separated from you as unclean for you. You shall be holy to me, for I, Yahweh, am holy." and have set you apart from the peoples, that you should be mine. A man or a woman that is a medium, or is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest shall not defile himself for the dead among his people, except for his relatives that are near to him, for his mother, for his father, for his son, for his daughter, for his brother, and for his virgin sister who is near to him, who has had no husband, for her he may defile himself. He shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall not shave their heads, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beards, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. They shall be holy to their God, and not profane the name of their God. For they offer the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, the bread of their God. Therefore they shall be holy. They shall not marry a woman who is a prostitute or profane. Neither shall they marry a woman divorced from her husband, for he is holy to his God. You shall sanctify him therefore, for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you. For I, Yahweh, who sanctify you, am holy. The daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by playing the prostitute, she profanes her father. She shall be burned with fire. He who is the high priest among his brothers, upon whose head the anointing oil is poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, shall not let the hair of his head hang loose, nor tear his clothes. Neither shall he go into any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God, for the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am Yahweh. He shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow, or one divorced, or a woman who has been defiled, or a prostitute, these he shall not marry, 
but a virgin of his own people shall he take as a wife. He shall not profane his seed among his people, for I am Yahweh who sanctifies him. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Say to Aaron, None of your seed throughout their generations who has a blemish may approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatever man he is that has a blemish, he shall not draw near a blind man or a lame, or he who has a flat nose, or any deformity, or a man who has an injured foot, or an injured hand, or hunchbacked, or a dwarf, or one who has a defect in his eye, or an itching disease, or scabs, or who has damaged testicles. No man of the seed of Aaron, the priest, who has a blemish, shall come near to offer the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. Since he has a blemish, he shall not come near to offer the bread of his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the Most Holy and of the Holy. He shall not come near to the veil, nor come near to the altar, because he has a blemish, that he may not profane my sanctuaries, for I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. So Moses spoke to Aaron and to his sons, and to all the children of Israel. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Tell Aaron and his sons to separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, which they make holy to me, and that they not profane my holy name. I am Yahweh. Tell them, if any one of all your seed throughout your generations approaches the holy things, which the children of Israel make holy to Yahweh, having his uncleanness on him, that soul shall be cut off from before me. I am Yahweh. Whoever of the seed of Aaron is a leper or has an issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he is clean. Whoever touches anything that is unclean by the dead, or a man whose seed goes from him, or whoever touches any creeping thing, whereby he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatever uncleanness he has, the person that touches any such shall be unclean until the evening, and shall not eat of the holy things unless he bathe his body in water. When the sun is down, he shall be clean, and afterwards he shall eat of the holy things, because it is his bread. That which dies of itself, or is torn by animals, he shall not eat, defiling himself by it. I am Yahweh. They shall therefore keep my charge, lest they bear sin for it, and die therein, if they profane it. I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. No stranger shall eat of the holy thing. A foreigner, living with the priests, or a hired servant, shall not eat of the holy thing. But if a priest buys a slave, purchased by his money, he shall eat of it, and such as are born in his house, they shall eat of his bread. If the priest's daughter is married to an outsider, she shall not eat of the heave offering of the holy things. But if a priest's daughter is a widow or divorced, and has no child, and has returned to her father's house, as in her youth, she may eat of her father's bread, but no stranger shall eat any of it. If a man eats something holy unwittingly, then he shall add the fifth part of its value to it, and shall give the holy thing to the priest. The priest shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel, which they offer to Yahweh, and so cause them to bear the iniquity that brings guilt, when they eat their holy things, for I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, Whoever is of the house of Israel or of the foreigners in Israel, who offers his offering, whether it be any of their vows or any of their free will offerings, which they offer to Yahweh for a burnt offering, that you may be accepted, you shall offer a male without blemish of the bulls, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatever has a blemish, that you shall not offer, for it shall not be acceptable to you. Whoever offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh to accomplish a vow, or for a free will offering, of the herd or of the flock, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Blind, 
injured, maimed, having a wart, festering, or having a running sore, you shall not offer these to Yahweh, nor make any offering by fire of them on the altar to Yahweh. Either a bull or a lamb that has any deformity or lacking in his parts, that you may offer for a free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. That which has its testicles bruised, crushed, broken, or cut, you shall not offer to Yahweh, neither shall you do thus in your land. Neither from the hand of a foreigner shall you offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them. There is a blemish in them. They shall not be accepted for you. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, When a bull, or a sheep, or a goat is born, then it shall remain seven days with its mother, and from the eighth day, and thenceforth, it shall be accepted for the offering of an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Whether it is a cow or you, you shall not kill it, and its young, both in one day. When you sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving to Yahweh, you shall sacrifice it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten on the same day. You shall leave none of it until the morning. I am Yahweh. Therefore, you shall keep my commandments and do them. I am Yahweh. You shall not profane my holy name, but I will be made holy among the children of Israel. I am Yahweh who makes you holy, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, The set feasts of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my set feasts. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no manner of work. It is a Sabbath to Yahweh in all your dwellings. These are the set feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their appointed season. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the evening, is Yahweh's Passover. On the fifteenth day of the month is the feast of unleavened bread to Yahweh. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. But you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh seven days. In the seventh day is the holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, When you have come into the land which I give to you and shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh to be accepted for you. On the next day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. On the day when you wave the sheaf, you shall offer a male lamb without blemish, a year old, for a burnt offering to Yahweh. The meal offering with it shall be two-tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire to Yahweh for a sweet savour, and the drink offering with it shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hin. You shall eat neither bread, nor roasted grain, nor fresh grain, until this same day, until you have brought the offering of your God. This is a statute forever, throughout your generations, in all your dwellings. You shall count from the next day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Even to the next day after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number fifty days, and you shall offer a new meal offering to Yahweh. You shall bring out of your habitations two loaves of bread for a wave offering made of two tenth parts of an ephah of fine flour. They shall be baked with yeast for first fruits to Yahweh. You shall present with the bread seven lambs without blemish a year old, one young bull and two rams. They shall be a burnt offering to Yahweh with their meal offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of a sweet aroma to Yahweh. You shall offer one male goat for a sin offering and two male lambs a year 
for a sacrifice of peace offerings. The priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before Yahweh with the two lambs. They shall be holy to Yahweh for the priest. You shall make proclamation on the same day. There shall be a holy convocation to you. You shall do no regular work. This is a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap into the corners of your field. Neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the foreigner. I am Yahweh your God. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, shall be a solemn rest to you, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, However, on the tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall afflict yourselves, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. You shall do no manner of work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before Yahweh your God. For whoever it is who shall not deny himself in that same day shall be cut off from his people. Whoever it is who does any manner of work in that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest to you, and you shall deny yourselves. In the ninth day of the month, at evening, from evening to evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the feast of tents for seven days to Yahweh. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no regular work. These are the appointed feasts of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meal offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, each on its own day, besides the Sabbaths of Yahweh and besides your gifts, and beside all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings which you give to Yahweh. So on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruits of the land, you shall keep the feast of Yahweh seven days. On the first day shall be a solemn rest, and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest. You shall take on the first day the fruit of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh your God seven days. You shall keep it a feast to Yahweh seven days in the year. It is a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall keep it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All who are native-born in Israel shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. Moses declared to the children of Israel the appointed feasts of Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light, to cause a lamp to burn continually, Outside of the veil of the testimony, in the tent of meeting, shall Aaron keep it in order from evening to morning, before Yahweh continually. It shall be a statute forever, throughout your generations. He shall keep in order the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before Yahweh continually. You shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes of it, two tenth parts of an ephah shall be in one cake. You shall set them in two rows, 
six on a row, on the pure gold table before Yahweh. You shall put pure frankincense on each row, that it may be to the bread, for a memorial, even an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Every Sabbath day he shall set it in order before Yahweh continually. It is on the behalf of the children of Israel an everlasting covenant. It shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place. For it is most holy to him of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire by a perpetual statute. The son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And the son of the Israelite woman and the man of Israel strove together in the camp. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name and cursed, and they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until the will of Yahweh should be declared to them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Bring out of the camp him who cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. He who blasphemes the name of Yahweh shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall certainly stone him. The foreigner, as well as the native-born, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. He who strikes any man mortally shall surely be put to death. He who strikes an animal mortally shall make it good, life for life. If anyone injures his neighbour as he has done, so shall it be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has injured someone, so shall it be done to him. He who kills an animal shall make it good, and he who kills a man shall be put to death. You shall have one kind of law, for the foreigner as well as the native-born, for I am Yahweh your God. Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and they brought forth him who had cursed out of the camp, and stoned him with stones. The children of Israel did as Yahweh commanded Moses. Yahweh said to Moses in Mount Sinai, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to Yahweh. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard, and gather in its fruits. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to Yahweh. You shall not sow your field, or prune your vineyard. What grows of itself in your harvest you shall not reap, and the grapes of your undressed vine you shall not gather. It shall be a year of solemn rest for the land. The Sabbath of the land shall be food for you, for yourself, for your servant, for your maid, for your hired servant, for your stranger who lives as a foreigner with you, for your livestock also, and for the animals that are in your land, shall all increase of it be for food. You shall count off seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years, and there shall be to you the days of seven Sabbaths of years, even forty-nine years. Then you shall sound the loud trumpet of the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement you shall sound the trumpet throughout all your land. You shall make the fiftieth year holy and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee to you, and each of you shall return to his own property, and each of you shall return to his family. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall not sow, neither reap that which grows of itself, nor gather from the undressed vines. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat of its increase out of the field. In this year of jubilee each of you shall return to his property. If you sell anything to your neighbour, or buy from your neighbour, you shall not wrong one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbour. According to the number of years of the crops, he shall sell you. According to the length of the years, you shall increase the price of it. And according to the shortness of the years, you shall diminish the price of it. For he is selling the number of crops to you. You shall not wrong one another, 
but you shall fear your God, for I am Yahweh your God. Therefore you shall do my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety. The land shall yield its fruit, and you shall eat your fill, and dwell therein in safety. If you said, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for the three years. You shall sow the eighth year, and eat of the fruits. The old store, until the ninth year, until its fruits come in, you shall eat the old store. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and live as foreigners with me. In all the land of your possession, you shall grant a redemption for the land. If your brother becomes poor and sells some of his possessions, then his kinsman, who is next to him, shall come and redeem that which his brother has sold. If a man has no one to redeem it, and he becomes prosperous and finds sufficient means to redeem it, then let him reckon the years since the sale of it, and restore the surplus to the man to whom he sold it, and he shall return to his property. But if he isn't able to get it back for himself, then what he has sold shall remain in the hand of him who has bought it until the year of Jubilee, and in the Jubilee it shall be released, and he shall return to his property. If a man sells a dwelling house in a ward city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it has been sold. For a full year he shall have the right of redemption. If it isn't redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the ward city shall be made sure in perpetuity to him who bought it throughout his generations. It shall not be released in the Jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be reckoned with the fields of the country. They may be redeemed, and they shall be released in the Jubilee. Nevertheless, the cities of the Levites, the houses in the cities of their possession, the Levites may redeem at any time. The Levites may redeem the house that was sold, and the city of his possession, and it shall be released in the Jubilee. For the houses of the city of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the fields of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. If your brother has become poor, and his hands can't support him among you, then you shall uphold him. As a stranger and a sojourner, he shall live with you. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God, that your brother may live among you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If your brother has grown poor among you and sells himself to you, you shall not make him to serve you as a slave, as a hired servant and as a sojourner. He shall be with you, he shall serve with you until the year of Jubilee. Then he shall go out from you, he and his children with him, and shall return to his own family and to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him with harshness, but shall fear your God. As for your male and your female slaves, whom you may have, of the nations that are around you, from them you may buy male and female slaves. Moreover, of the children of the strangers who sojourn among you, of them you may buy, and of their families who are with you, which they have conceived in your land, and they will be your property. You may make them an inheritance for your children after you, to hold for a possession. Of them may you take your slaves forever. But over your brothers, the children of Israel, you shall not rule, one over another with harshness. If a stranger or sojourner with you becomes rich, and your brother besides him has grown poor, and sells himself to the stranger or foreigner living among you, or to a member of the stranger's family, after he is sold, he may be redeemed. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any who is a close relative to him of his family may redeem him, or if he has grown rich, he may redeem himself. He shall reckon with him who bought him from the year that he sold himself to him 
to the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years, according to the time of a hired servant shall he be with him. If there are yet many years, according to them he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. If there remains but a few years to the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon with him, according to his years of service, he shall give back the price of his redemption. As a servant hired year by year shall he be with him, he shall not rule with harshness over him in your sight. If he isn't redeemed by these means, then he shall be released in the year of Jubilee, he and his children with him. For to me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. You shall make for yourselves no idols, neither shall you raise up an engraved image or a pillar, neither shall you place any figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am Yahweh your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am Yahweh. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you your rains in their season, and the land shall yield its increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall reach to the vintage, and the vintage shall reach to the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no one will make you afraid, and I will remove evil animals out of your land, neither shall the sword go through your land. You shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. I will have respect for you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and will establish my covenant with you. You shall eat old store long kept, and you shall move out the old because of the new. I will set my tent among you, and my soul won't abhor you. I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you will be my people. I am Yahweh your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves, and I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you go upright. But if you will not listen to me, and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall reject my statutes, and if your soul abhors my ordinances, so that you will not do all my commandments, but break my covenant, I will also do this. I will appoint terror over you, even consumption and fever, that shall consume the eyes, and make the soul to pine away and you will sow your seed in vain, for your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you, and you will be struck before your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee when no one pursues you. If you, in spite of these things, will not listen to me, then I will chastise you seven times more for your sins. I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your sky like iron, and your soil like brass and your strength will be spent in vain, for your land won't yield its increase, neither will the trees of the land yield their fruit. If you walk contrary to me, and won't listen to me, then I will bring seven times more plagues on you, according to your sins. I will send the wild animals among you, which will rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you few in number, and your roads will become desolate. If by these things you won't be reformed to me, but will walk contrary to me, then I will also walk contrary to you, and I will strike you, even I, seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword upon you that will execute the vengeance of your covenant, and you will be gathered together within your cities, and I will send the pestilence among you, and you will be delivered into the hand of the enemy. When I break your staff of bread, Ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver your bread again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. If you, in spite of this, 
won't listen to me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you in wrath, and I also will chastise you seven times for your sins. You will eat the flesh of your sons, and you will eat the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places, and cut down your incense altars, and cast your dead bodies upon the bodies of your idols, and my soul will abhor you. I will lay your cities waste, and will bring your sanctuaries to desolation, and I will not take delight in the sweet fragrance of your offerings. I will bring the land to desolation, and your enemies that dwell therein will be astonished at it. I will scatter you among the nations, and I will draw out the sword after you, and your land will be a desolation, and your city shall be a waste. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate and you are in your enemy's land. Even then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate it shall have rest, even the rest which it didn't have in your Sabbaths when you lived on it. As for those of you who are left, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a driven leaf will put them to flight, and they shall flee as one flees from the sword, and they will fall when no one pursues. They will stumble over one another, as it were before the sword, when no one pursues, and you will have no power to stand before your enemies. You will perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies will eat you up. Those of you who are left will pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers in their trespass which they trespassed against me, and also that because they walked contrary to me, I also walked contrary to them and brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised heart is humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. The land also will be left by them, and will enjoy its Sabbaths, while it lies desolate without them, and they will accept the punishment of their iniquity, because, even because they rejected my ordinances, and their soul abhorred my statutes, Yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am Yahweh their God. But I will for their sake remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations, that I might be their God. I am Yahweh." These are the statutes, ordinances, and laws which Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by Moses. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a man makes a vow, the person shall be for Yahweh by your valuation. Your valuation shall be of a male from twenty years old, even to sixty years old. Even your valuation shall be fifty shekels of silver, after the shekel of the sanctuary. If it is a female, then your valuation shall be thirty shekels. If the person is from five years old, even to twenty years old, then your valuation shall be for a male twenty shekels, and for a female ten shekels. If the person is from a month old, even to five years old, then your valuation shall be for a male five shekels of silver, and for a female your valuation shall be three shekels of silver. If the person is from sixty years old and upward, if it is a male, then your valuation shall be fifteen shekels, and for a female, ten shekels. But if he is poorer than your valuation, then he shall be set before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to the ability of him who vowed shall the priest value him. If it is an animal of which men offer an offering to Yahweh, all that any man gives of such to Yahweh becomes holy. He shall not alter it, nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change animal for animal, then both it and that for which it is changed shall be holy. 
If it is any unclean animal of which they do not offer as an offering to Yahweh, then he shall set the animal before the priest, and the priest shall value it, whether it is good or bad. As you the priest values it, so shall it be. But if he will indeed redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part to it, to its valuation. When a man dedicates his house to be holy to Yahweh, then the priest shall evaluate it, whether it is good or bad, as the priest shall evaluate it, so shall it stand. If he who dedicates it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money to your valuation to it, and it shall be his. If a man dedicates to Yahweh part of the field of his possession, then your valuation shall be according to the seed for it. The sowing of a homer of barley shall be valued at fifty shekels of silver. If he dedicates his field from the year of Jubilee, according to your valuation it shall stand. But if he dedicates his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon to him the money according to the years that remain to the year of Jubilee, and an abatement shall be made from your valuation. If he who dedicated the field will indeed redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your valuation to it, and it shall remain his. If he will not redeem the field, or if he has sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed any more. But the field, when it goes out in the jubilee, shall be holy to Yahweh, as a field devoted it shall be owned by the priests. If he dedicates to Yahweh a field which he has bought, which is not of the field of his possession, then the priest shall reckon to him the worth of your valuation up to the year of jubilee, and he shall give your valuation on that day as a holy thing to Yahweh. In the year of Jubilee the field shall return to him from whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land belongs. All your valuation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary, twenty gearers to the shekel. Only the firstborn among animals, which is made a firstborn to Yahweh, no man may dedicate it, whether an ox or sheep. It is Yahweh's. If it is an unclean animal, then he shall buy it back according to your valuation, and shall add to it the fifth part of it, or, if it isn't redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your valuation. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man shall devote to Yahweh of all that he has, whether of man or animal, or of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy to Yahweh. No one devoted who shall be devoted from among men shall be ransomed. He shall surely be put to death. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is Yahweh's. It is holy to Yahweh. If a man redeems anything of his tithe, he shall add a fifth part to it. All the tithe of the herds or the flocks, whatever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy to Yahweh. He shall not search whether it is good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he changes it at all, then both it and that for which it is changed shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which Yahweh commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai.